Hello, construction cronies. Welcome to another quick metal stud framing video, man. Brought to you by your boy Chris here. Okay, man. So right away, uh, measuring for bottom track. Okay, so when I'm cutting bottom track, I am coming back three quarters of an inch to let drywall pass through along the exterior wall there. Whether it's half inch or five eighths drywall, go three quarters every time. Get all your bottom track tacked in and so that you can get your pieces cut, right? And then you can plot out the top track. You see how smooth and flat that is when it's nice like that and you don't have multiple levels? You can plot your, your top track out on the bottom just like that, man. Just make sure you go backwards the way you came from the bottom to stagger your joints. And always, yeah, always go over the door headers. You don't cut the top track to stop on either end of the door because you put a header, <laughs> right? So I'm going to show you guys uh, this little infill right here. Okay, I got my bottom track on. I'm going to put my top on. I'm using the DX351 to shoot pins in every 16 inches, okay? On 6-inch track or smaller, I can put it in the middle or stagger them. On 8-inch or bigger, I'll put two pins in every, you know, 12 to 16 inches type thing, right? But uh, I like to put two pins in um, uh, in big track, but then, yeah, you can just stagger it on the small. While I'm up there, I'm measuring the both ends, okay? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut studs to shoot to the columns, and I'm going to take note of the uh, the height. If it's like, you know, in that standard track, we want to stay a quarter inch to three eighths down from the top. So if it's the same, I'll just cut all the studs the same height. So you get your stud height and then you start marking your, uh, you can start marking your centers here. Uh, sometimes in, in, when you're doing your like infills, you mark your centers and you, and then you just check your, uh, your studs, right? We use a comb combination of lasers, uh, pins and line lasers to be an effective framer. You should have two pin lasers and one line laser on the column studs here. I'm going to shoot one pin in the center on six inch or smaller every two feet. Okay. And on eight inch, like exterior, say exterior walls, heavy gauge, I'm going to go uh, stagger those uh, pins every two feet. Okay. I'm not going to put more in. I'm just going every two feet. It'll be strong enough, especially when it's the eight inch heavy gauge, it'll stiffen right up for you. Always. Yeah. Make sure to get your channel in. Okay. Before you, uh, you screw in all your studs, right? So what you're going to do here is you're going to have a guy who's doing all of the cutting for you. You're going to go and do all the measurements and write them down. And then you're going to have a guy coming in behind you doing all the cutting, right? That's super, super easy, dudes. This is this is straightforward. In, like when you're clamping your top track to the I-beam, if you're using slot track, for example, you need to leave three quarters to seven eighths for deflection from the top of the, the track, right? And uh, this is standard track. So like I said, we go quarter inch to three eighths. It's... Uh, it's, it gives you enough room and, and try to get the, try to cut them all the same height if you can, if it's not a crazy difference, right? In a situation like this, it's really nice. So the, here's the corner. I wanted to give you an example of the corner where the drywaller is going to put a piece of angle in the outside there to seal that corner. So it's not the framer's fault. You just leave it as is like that, right? And the drywall will run past and, and it'll close that, enclose that column completely. I'm leaving three quarters of an inch. Uh, for the half inch or five inch drywall because you want a continuous seal around the perimeter You don't want cold air coming into your interior partitions from your exterior walls So make sure you got a good seal around the uh, perimeter Now when the tracks are going the opposite way like in between the joists you just simply put clips I'm gonna link a video right here that shows you all about clips guys uh, just just take note of how I'm screwing things in here and how, how I'm overlapping uh, my corners and things like that. I'll also link a video on corners. So that's two videos so far that I'll be linking, one on clips and one on uh, corners, okay? That'll teach you all about that. When you're doing your top track, you can use little pieces of stud, not track, to join your tracks together, or you can cut what we call fishtails, which you'll, you will see, um, you might see in this video, but I do have other videos, like especially my frost wall one, uh, where you can see that. You see how I'm cutting for drywall, always leaving that three quarters of an inch for the drywall to pass in. And like I said again, not gonna say again, doesn't matter if it's half inch or five eighths, leave three quarters of an inch all the time for your drywall to slip through. Actually, you know what? Hell, I'm gonna link one more video for you. So there's gonna be three videos. I'm gonna leave one on corners, one on clips, and one on headers for you. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on that here. This is just some quick framing tips and tricks and take note of my screw patterns and how I'm I'm plotting my, my tracks out, right? This right here will give you an example of different levels, 
of the where the the floor joists are at different levels and you'll see how that works There's the flap, right? So I, what I do is I'll cut it like a quarter inch back from the ledge that it's going to be sitting on. And then I'll give an extra three quarters of an inch for the drywall to pass through. Because you want the drywall to pass through the top and the bottom, right? So just keep that in mind. And um, say you're going to flap that over six inch uh, steel stud. I'm going to cut the flap five and three quarter plus another three quarters. So six and a half back to, uh, to um, uh, allow for the drywall to slip through. And it gives you a bit of a ledge. Now this here, there's no ledge because you don't really need a ledge all the time. I have put a clip on the ends. Okay, you see where I put my clips? I put them every two feet. I put one on the ends and uh, like where the corner will be. And, uh, and, and that's how I, that's how you do it. You don't, you don't go, you don't frame your wall up inside the joist. Okay, you have to be at the same level as uh, you were say where you won't cross the, 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 the floor joist. I'm using two pin lasers in this situation. I have one on the far end here and then I'm and I'm plumbing up the outside corner on the on where the corner is here. And what I'll, you'll see here in a second how it all comes together. It's beautiful, guys. Hope everyone's doing well. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know uh, what you guys are working on. I, I, let me know if you have any questions, okay? I need to, I'm here for you guys. Just, just ask away, dudes. And don't forget to get subscribed and hit that bell notification icon so you get notified when I upload these videos, guys. So you see right there, pinning up the outside corner, and you take note of those screws, guys. Take note of all the screws and the combinations of the line laser and pin lasers. Like I said, to be an effective framer, you need to have two pin lasers and one la one line laser, at, at kind of at minimum, right? you know what I mean? So it's different. When you're doing exterior walls, we always do our top track first, or if you're... Uh, doing high walls where the bottom track will be in the way of your lift or something, you do the top track first. But in interior partitions, you generally do the bottom track and then you lay out your top because it's always going to be, a, like not always, but most of the time, it's the same level where the floor, floor joists are always at the same height, right? And you're not, uh, you're not changing heights. But there is one situation coming up you're going to see here in a minute that it does change and, I'll, and you'll just see exactly what to do there. It's pretty easy, guys. It's just, it's just, you know, just keep watching and learning from me and you guys will get the hang of this no problem. You can see my routine, right? I'm, I'm putting the track in, I'm, I'm laying out my centers and I'm taking my stud heights and I'm writing them down as I go so that my cutter knows you know, he's coming in behind me and putting the studs in. Look at this one here. I, because I plumbed out each outside corner, I don't even need to plumb up this one at all. All I have to do is match it to outside corner to outside corner. So it's pretty cool. Um, you know, save you a little bit of time right there. Also, too, guys, when you're drawing your centers, you, you know that you've framed up the walls that you're drawing your tape from. So when you're doing your 16, 32, 48, blah, 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 if you know that you frame that wall and it's perfectly level you're golden all you just pull your tape just like you did on the bottom and you come out say you have half inch drywall on that wall you come out like 16 half to your first um to your first uh, stud right your first center and if you're coming in from an outside corner just come in like a quarter inch because you always want to have a quarter inch staggered for normal uh corners and for round corners bull nose corners you need to be like half inch half inch Cool. See, now I, all I had to do is match the final piece, the three and five eighths, just match corner to corner. I didn't have to use the laser because I already pinned up each outside corner there. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Boom. Right on. So yeah, you see how it stepped up there? That's why you just break it up. That one, one closet door will be, will be at two different elevations. Track across. And you see how I cut the top track so the drywall can slip through as well. Right? So it's got a space and, and the drywall can, can carry can carry straight through all the way. Right? And that's why this one here, oops, sorry. Um, this one here is a floater, right? So the exterior, exterior board will come in and wrap here, right? Or it'll stop here at least and then this is all 5 eighths, but yeah, this is a floater here. will help lock that in. Yeah, everywhere. You can see at the top, right? There's three quarters of an inch everywhere for your drywall to slip in.
But yeah, right there, you can see how it's different elevations in the ceiling, and you can't necessarily plot that out on the on the bottom track, right? You you just you just measure it up there, and you fit the pieces in, and it's golden. But you can see where I'm overlapping my tracks and tying things in and making it super strong. Uh, there's some places you do and some places you don't, right? Uh, use the clips uh, wherever you feel is necessary, okay? Like sometimes the, 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 the top track will land a little bit on the, the joist, but it's just not enough meat, right? So you add a clip in there to stiffen it right up and make it super, super strong, okay? And um, yeah, like this was a really neat house. This was a, almost a, what it was like, a, I can't remember what it was. I think it was 3 million bucks or something like that for this house. It was really cool. So I got more videos coming. And uh, please ask any questions you have down below in the comments. I have a, I have a video on bulkheads coming out next, guys. This is Chris from Construction Cronies. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, everyone.